So yeah, today is really about version two of the Beatlin codes. Um, but because I'm aware that some people that are joining today will not um, know much about the codes, I will just give a little bit of background. Where did we start? What, who are we? What, what do we do? Um, and then as we'll go into the detail, like Jane just said, of, of what, what changes we made and why we made them and how, how you can include them in your projects. Um, if I can, yes. So just very briefly, um, so we all work for the IUCN UK Beatland programme. That's where the Beatland codes, um, where it sits, um, it's created by and owned by the Beatland codes, Beatland programme, sorry. So just a little bit of background on the programme. Um, so we have a vision for healthy, wildlife rich Beatlands in the UK that provide multiple benefits for people. Um, so we really want to get the pigments that we have valued, understood better, um, through really strong partnership with scientists, practitioners, lab managers, and policymakers, and then obviously through action, through knowledge exchange. So we're really a facilitating um, organisation to help and hopefully get all these pigments restored. Hence, why we also developed the pigment code. So you're probably all aware that there is a big funding gap, public funding gap in the UK for peatlands. So um, we've got a big area of our peatlands, about 80% are in a damaged state in the UK. So that's about 3 million hectares of peatlands. Um, that's a big issue because um, the greater peatlands, our peatlands at the moment actually emit more carbon in our trees, forest, whole forest sequester every year at the moment. This is a big issue, but there's also a big opportunity. So it's been estimated that it would cost about between eight and 22 billion pounds to restore the peatlands, um, but there would be a benefit of about 40, 45 to 51 billion pounds over the next 100 years if we do so. That, so it's not just, there's a big, a big gain to be had, um, but the public funding is not enough to do this at the scale and urgency that we need it to happen. So it's been an estimated 560 million um, pounds funding gap to actually restore the degraded pigments in the UK. So that's where the pigment code comes in um, and, and why we've created it. So the pigment code is a UK government backed domestic voluntary carbon market standard. Um, the landowners with eligible pigments can follow to attract private finance for pigment restoration by selling carbon units. So it's a way to bring in private finance to help um, bridge that funding gap. Um, so in the pigment code's purpose is also really to underpin the market trust and confidence so we do get that private investment into pigments. So just a little bit on the background. So in 2015, the pigment code was launched. And then in 2018, the first project was validated. So it was a, a blanket book, um, a try hope in Scotland. Um, then in 2020, we joined um, together with the Woodland Carbon Codes, we created the UK Land Carbon Registry. So one place where you can have where we have both Woodland Carbon Code and Peatland Code projects, and where the, the units and all, all of it is visible. Um, then last year we updated, we did version 1.2 um, updates to the Pitland code. So that was really about UCAS, um, so the UK accreditation services to be compliant with the ISO standards. So we needed to tighten our, our language to have more guidance in place. Um, uh, yeah, so that was the main purpose of that. And then Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, we launched version two of the Beatland code. So now we have fans included, emission factors updated, and that's as much as I'm going to say about version two because Ed is going to talk you through all of that. So just a little bit on the background. So the Beatland code management. So we've got a core team that you've just we've just been introduced by Jane. Then we've got an ex executive board, a technical advisory board and the market and investment forum behind us to really help and make sure um, that is really robust um, from all aspects. So this is the infrastructure for the monitoring, reporting and verification on the Beatland code. So it is really important that all of these bits 
are in place to have a really high integrity um, standard. So we are based on, on really robust science. We are aligned with the UK greenhouse gas inventory. Um, and part of version two was updating the emission factors to realign again. Um, independent governance is really important. Like I just said, we've got that governance with executive board, technical board and a forum behind us. Permanence, so that's uh, obviously when you sell offsets, it needs to make sure that that's a permanent emission reduction. Um, so we also have a risk buffer in place there. Additionality is key in carbon markets. So that means that you have to make sure that your action is above business as usual. And we've got tests to check that that's the case. Then we've got independent validation and verification. So we now have three validation verification bodies, which is OFNG, SAC Consulting and Silver Association. And then the last one is transparency. So we've got that UK land carbon registry um, which is a separate independent registry um, hosted by SP Global. Um, and all our calculators and all of that data is publicly available. So we are now at 160 projects registered, um, just over uh, 20,000 hectares of peatland restoration within those 160 projects, and um, around 4.7 million tons of CO2 emission reductions all for the 160 projects lifetime. Um, 28 projects are validated. And you can see on the map, most of our projects currently are in Scotland, um, but hopefully with the FENS inclusion now, we will get more projects in England and Wales as well. Um, and a graph below shows that we are growing really, really rapidly. Um, you can see that we, um, yeah, that really steep increase there. So that's great, we get more pigments restored. Um, just a little bit of background on, on buyer confidence and why that's so important. So obviously the way to attract private finance is by companies buying these carbon credits. So they need to make sure that they can use those carbon, carbon credits and, and they have, need to have confidence in the standards of what we do. So it's really important that we've got the government backing. So if you read like recent government papers or, or strategies, you can see that the Bitlink code is always mentioned in there. Um, and then the other thing is that there's about 12,000 large companies in the UK that are mandated to report their emissions. And the UK has environmental reporting guidelines and that shows that you can use Bitlink carbon codes for that. Um, the environmental reporting guidelines should be updated soon. So hopefully they will become even clearer in the near future. Um, and then the other one that really helps buy confidence is that transparent registry where they can see the documents of these projects um, and the units issued as well. So just very briefly on how do you, how do you actually get this private finance in? So that's really mainly by selling carbon units and I'm, like there's a way, there's also an investor pathway, but I'm not going to touch on that one um, for this webinar, but we can definitely, if you have questions around that, we can discuss that later on. Um, current prices for PIUs are about between 15 and 25 pounds. And we're working on um, a price index for the UK carbon. So that will be a lot more visible, hopefully in the near future. Um, and you can see that's quite a range. So what the facts that highs is, first of all, it's a voluntary offset. So these companies don't have to buy it. So there's not a set price for this. Um, and it, and um, the location and access of a site can really, really affect the price, your type of project, the vintage of your unit. So when will that unit actually get verified? Is that in five years? Is that in 90 years time? A company cannot actually offset it or use that unit until it's verified. So that's a really important, um, re like, um, yeah, something that affects your price. The state of your project, is it already restored? Is it midway through restoration? Um, was it restored 10 years ago? That affects your price. Benefits that are wider than just carbon and the security of the ownership slash the delivery partner there. And then just briefly on 
carbon finance example. So, so what do we actually mean with that? And how can a landowner, how can you actually um, work with this? So there's a few options. So you could do a restoration project on your own land and don't sell your carbon credits, but have like invest your own money into, into the project. That really kind of like you say, you grow your own credits or in setting. You can restore yourself and sell PIUs, so pending issuance units. Those are not verified yet. They're kind of a, they are promise that you're going to reduce your emissions, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, but you can sell them up front if you would like to. Um, and that's a lot of projects have done that to date. But we do see a shift to restore your land and wait to sell later on. So um, the expectation in the market is that potentially the price will grow up slightly um, or waiting until you've got your units verified. So a verified unit is likely to get a slightly better price than a pending issuance unit as well, because then the emission reduction has happened already. So the end buyer can immediately use that to offset. So, so the expectation that that will um, give you a slightly higher price. And then the other one is buy land to, to grow your own credits or sell the credits. Um, and we see that um, a little bit happening. We see that mainly on the woodland side, but we also see that a little bit happening on peatlands. So just on, on next steps, what, what are we, like we've now done version two, but obviously we're not done yet. Um, we will always keep on, on evolving the peatland codes. Um, so we're looking at polluter culture, um, and really a call for evidence um, soon, so that will be coming out soon. So ideally we want to have polluter culture under the, under the peatland code as well. So polluter culture is, is agriculture, but then on peatlands with a really high water table. So you don't actually um, degrade your peatland underneath your crop, um, but that's really new and we need more evidence and more data to be able to, to bring that under the code. Um, I just mentioned that we're working with the Carbon Code and the Price Index for UK voluntary carbon markets. So hopefully that will come in, will be coming soon. We're working, like looking at carbon sequestration during the transitional phase. So um, when you go from bare feet to vegetation, there's some indication that there might actually be quite a significant carbon sequestration happening at that point. So not just an emission reduction. Um, so that's high on the list. Um, then looking at biodiversity soon, potentially water quality and quantity, uh, the UK accreditation uh, services, so UCAS pilot phase, so getting our validation and verification bodies, UCAS accredited, and we're looking at ACROA and, or it depends how, how, they, how they divide it themselves, the ICVCM, so the Integrity Council for Voluntary Carbon Markets, they have at the end of last week published their core carbon principles and the, and the way that you can, as a standard, apply um, to be, I don't know how they call it, accredited or something like that against them. So that's obviously high on our list as well to see if we, if we can get those accreditations in place as well. So that will help with the market's confidence. Um, then lastly for me is around Peatland code saving, so that's more of an offering from us. So if you as an organization have a group of people that you think would really benefit from more specific peatland code training, then please do get in touch. Our email address is at, at the bottom of this slide. Um, and we're also obviously now working on updating our online resources um, to be in line with version two. So if you have any ideas for can help or um, if you if there's really something missing currently on our website, then please let us know because that will be high on our priorities.